So. <laughs> well, last week we had readings about how Jesus is the, the gate for the sheep and also the shepherd whose, whose sheep know his voice. So we've got that conversation getting started that we can hear the voice of God. And among the things going on in today's readings are the, is the idea of name. And the, the, uh, we're going to hear about names of people. We're going to hear about a, a mysterious name and we're going to hear about the power of the name of Jesus. And so there's, there are three name ideas. And at the beginning, this, I, first of all, well, welcome. This is uh, Our Lady of the Wayside Bible, Friday morning Bible study. <laughs> and, and I'm Kathleen Miller. And uh, let us begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for the fact that you know each of us by name. Thank you that you want to have such a personal relationship with us that in the book of Revelation, we even have nicknames from you. And sometimes you give nicknames to your friends. And we thank you that, that you care so much about us as individuals, that you care about us so much that we can come to you with anything. And so we ask that, the Holy, that you'll send the Holy Spirit so that this time will be fruitful and so that each of us may grow closer to you. Praise your holy name. Amen. 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 Um, we've got... Three, three readings that have name connections. The first reading is about the uh, early trouble in the early church, where there were some people, and they were called Hellenists because they speak Greek. And even today, the name of the country that we call Greece is Hellas. They call themselves Hellas. But the Romans used to call them Graeci. So trickle down in history, and we call them Greeks. Same thing, there's a country in Europe that's called Deutschland. It calls itself Deutschland, but the Romans used to call them Germani, and so we call that country Germany. So when, a, when words get translated from one language to another, they can be translated in a number of different ways. And one way is to just transliterate them so that they sound about the same. And the other is to translate the meaning of that word. So. We've got the Hellenists and all and a bunch of names in the first reading, and all the names are going to be Greek names. Then the second reading is it's a mysterious one. It's from the second from the first letter of Peter. We've been reading the letter of Peter for the past few weeks. Well, about 30 years before Peter wrote Jesus and his disciples who were at a place called Caesarea Philippi which is a tourist attraction, it still is. It's got a different name now, it's called something like Banas. And it, the, big, the big attraction at Caesarea Philippi was a gigantic rock. And into that rock had been built a temple to the god Pan. And the god Pan is a really popular god for military people because if you prayed to the god Pan and you were in a fight, uh, it would, Pan would send your enemies into a panic. And so, Jesus and his disciples are next to this gigantic rock, and Peter and Jesus have a conversation in Matthew chapter 16, and Jesus says, Simon, I'm going to call you Rocky, and on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Well, I can imagine that all this, the other disciples thought that it was very amusing to call this guy Rock, because um, of all the disciples, he's the <laughs> most likely to be considered the most likely to pull out a, a, a blade and cut off somebody's ear. You know, you'd think that Jesus would have named him something like loose cannon. And but he names him rock. And Peter then starts thinking about it. And the other disciples call him rock. Sometimes they call him Simon. Sometimes they call him rock. And you can tell that they still called him rock. Because although Jesus named him in Aramaic, which is a language that's related to Hebrew, by the time we get into the book of Acts of the Apostles or into the Gospels, the Gospels and the book of Acts are all written in Greek. So there are two things that 
a Greek writer could do. He could either take the Aramaic word kepha and make it sound Greek and call it Cephas, or he could take the Aramaic word kepha and translate it into uh, Greek or Latin or whatever language it is, which comes out rock. Or in Latin, rock, the word for rock is Petrus. So in the book of Acts, sometimes we see this guy who started out being Simon. Sometimes we see him named Kephas, and sometimes we see him named Kepha, and sometimes we see him named Peter. And what they should have done is call him rock, which is what they do in French, where he's called Pierre, which is the word for rock in French. However, in English, we have his name being Peter, but it really means. So here's this guy, 30 years later. He's got the nickname Rock, and he's wondering to himself, why did Jesus call me a rock? So maybe he's thinking back on scripture, and he thinks, well, David killed Goliath with a rock. And the Mount Sinai is a giant rock, and people were afraid to go near it. And people sometimes beat each other up with rocks. And then there's a psalm where, you know, the rock is a stumbling stone. And there's another psalm where David is calling God the rock. God, you are my rock, my rock of refuge. Well, so he's got 30 years to think about what does it mean that Jesus would call me rocky? And so then we have the letter of Peter that we're going to hear Sunday, where he talks not only about stones, he's got this real long meditation on what it means to be a stone or a rock. And he also talks about priesthood. And it, Peter couldn't have been a priest in Judaism because he was from the wrong tribe, wrong family. But he is a priest, and he is the chief priest of Christianity. So he's going to have some thoughts about priesthood and both rockness and priesthood and how it applies to us. So the middle reading is going to be really interesting. Then the gospel reading is also got the name, the idea of name in it, because there's no other name but the name of Jesus by which we can be saved. And if you pull that verse, no one can be saved except by Jesus. Out of context, you can get yourself really confused and wonder to yourself, what does that mean for people from fourth century BC China? And what does that mean for babies? And what does that mean for people who've never heard of Jesus? And what, what does that mean for people who have the wrong idea of who Jesus is? Believe it or not. The answer to those questions is going to be in today's gospel. So we've got a lot of, we've got a terrific set of readings today. And um, to the people who are seeing this recording, I am about to close the recording because uh, as you have probably guessed, we run a pretty loose ship around here and our discussion gets very candid and sometimes gets very personal and I'm not willing to put that out for the world. But if you would like more information about Friday Bible study at Our Lady of the Wayside, uh, feel free to email Bible study at olwparish.org. And so have a wonderful, have a wonderful time listening to the Sunday readings because they answer a lot of questions. So blessings and peace, you guys, and goodbye to the recording people. <laughs>